Hi, I'm Ming Zhou and I'm 30 this year. I'm the Director of Citizen Adventures and what we do is tours around different neighbourhoods to uncover social issues. Uh, first few cases of COVID amongst the migrant workers uh, started. Uh, for me, it was a huge concern because of uh, my work involving migrant workers prior to that. And I think one of the risks that was evident to me was the kind of close proximity that workers were living together, as well as the disincentives for perhaps reporting if they were feeling unwell, and also some of the healthcare gaps that were in existence, and also what they could possibly fall through as cracks. So these were um, issues that I wanted to highlight in the Facebook post sometime in February. And that was of key concern because uh, at the point of time, there were only just a handful of cases involving migrant workers. I live in Geelong all my life, at right? the same place. So um, it was actually the first um, interaction with the workers in 2013 that led to a very close friendship. And it was quite natural to like think of you know, who they are and be curious about what they do and what their lives are like. And in 2013, my first interaction, hanging out with them, playing badminton, uh, really led to that close friendship that led me to think deeper about some of the things that they were telling me about their lives in Singapore. Um, I think a common thread was the sacrifices that they made uh, just to come to Singapore. You know. So the tour started uh, in 2014. Um, it started as like a casual thing when I was still in university um, and it was just like showing friends who were interested to learn about the red light district. But then when I started to share about the other sides of it, I think that was when, you know, oh, you mean there are migrant workers that live here? And I think these comments got me thinking, you know, uh, about the associations of stereotypes that we have to places um, and how these stereotypes continue onto the people who might be part of the community. And I think these aspects got me thinking of Geelong as a social ecosystem that people here are, as part of the community are interdependent on one another. Uh, just like migrant workers are not dependent on us one way, but we are as much dependent on them. You know, when your friend confides you in an issue that they are facing, that you are compelled to respond. Um, how back Ali Baba started, one of my friends who, um, whose uh, father had a stroke in Bangladesh, and he and his twin brother left Bangladesh to, to work here. And they were actually studying in medical school, you know, they could be a doctor, but they had to quit school and it wasn't their decision to make. And they had to come here to start working. Um, him and his twin brother, they had to save as much money as they could. One of the twins, uh, Basha, he didn't cut his hair for six months because of that. So I actually learned on YouTube how to cut my own hair and then offered him a haircut. So I think it was moments like this that, you know, you feel like it's just one worker. How many others are there like him out there? The number of haircuts, we actually hit a thousand uh, in mid-September, just for the COVID period. As a community, I think in the humanitarian crisis, we have rallied around the issue and emerged out of the crisis stronger than we were previously. 